Hey, so this is Matt Graham, and um, I just finished running the Pacific Crest Trail through the length of Oregon and, and the tail end of California. And uh, I tried out a lot of different um, ultralight running gear to get some ideas for myself and also hopefully for you guys as well. And um, now that I'm done with the trail, <laughs> actually I've learned a lot from this and I uh, just wanted to give you an overview on what ended up working the best for me and what I ended up using the most as well. So. Um, when I started the trail, for you guys have been with us the whole way, I used uh, the Ultimate Direction um, Hard Rocker Wild and Tough Pack. And this is kind of more of a best style day pack. And the cool thing about it is I was able to carry nuts and seeds, goji berries, uh, put chia seeds in the bottles. And I felt like I had a lot of hydration, which was nice. And um, loosen this up a little bit. You can see when you clip it on both sides, it's really snug. And, um, and when I was out overnight, what I would do with this is uh, take an ultralight sleeping bag and uh, roll it up inside the red tablecloth. <laughs> or any kind of cloth will work fine. You can use a thin piece of wool or, um, or anything and tie it around your waist like this. And it's kind of cool because it was a... You know, it's an independent system, so you can still rotate your your body fully, which is what this pack's designed for. It doesn't have a hip belt that's attached to the pack, but by separating the little booty back there with the sleeping bag, I was able to carry, you know, basic raw essentials, a sleeping bag, the gear up here, and, um, and some camera equipment, some miscellaneous stuff. And this is bare bones, but I really like this system. In fact, I feel like when I'm, I'm back doing runs in Utah, I'll probably use a system very similar to this. And, and I do feel a little high tech with this thing, so I, I'm thinking about using this as a template to sew one out of buckskin. So I'll have a little bit more primitive setup, maybe make some sleeves for atlatls, hand drill kit, and kind of spruce it up. It was kind of fun. So I, I did enjoy learning a lot from this, this system here. Um, and then uh, later on, when started cooling down a little bit more and um, wanted a little bit more comforts I ended up using this uh, the fast pack and uh, the fast pack 20 here this is also an ultimate direction design and uh, the nice thing about it I was able to stick a little bit more more items in there so I could still keep the ultralight sleeping bag in there and uh, sometimes I'd use just a six by eight tarp by Hyperlite, which this thing weighs like under seven ounces. It's really crazy. And, uh, and then this is the x Lite sleeping pad. So that's like the whole basic sleeping system in there. It's packs really small, still plenty of room to carry nuts and seeds, extra clothing, everything else that you might need as well. And, um, this pack, same style. It's a vest style pack, which means it doesn't have a waist belt. And a lot of people who are used to backpacking are so used to a waist belt, you think that's necessary. But when you're running, you don't, you don't want to be locked in down there. So this is a really good setup for that. And I really enjoyed this pack. With Ultimate Direction, um, they make softer flasks, but I preferred the harder ones because you can stick them in and out a little bit easier. They're a little bit easier to fill up from the creeks. And on this pack, this actually worked really well. Um, I'm going to go back real quick on this other pack. What I ended up doing was using their flask on one side and then a Ultra Spire on the other. And the reason for that is because I like the volume and stiffness this, this provided, but I like the comfort that the Ultra Spire uh, flask provided. So sometimes I'd end up switching them around if, if Ultimate Direction one rubbed a little bit hard on me. But overall, I mean, it was pretty good. You know, I just noticed it in higher miles that, you know, this could have been rounded out a little more. That's the only complaint I really have about the bag. Other than that, it was amazing. Um, sometimes, the other system I liked, I ended up picking up this up later on for uh, the shelter itself. It's just a, a bivy sack, which is something I used to use quite a bit in the past. The bivy sack is really nice because you can you don't have to string it up. There's no setup. You just throw your sleeping bag in there and 
crawl in and you can fit it into a lot of tight spaces that you couldn't necessarily pitch a tarp or a small tent. So that's that's really awesome. And this bivy sack, Outdoor Research, it's called the Helium Bivy, appropriately named because it's very lightweight and it's, um, I think this uh, weighs just a little over a pound. It's very light, incredible. Um, so, so for the knives, um, in the past, you know, people have seen me use this knife a lot. Um, this is one I designed with Condor. It's called the Primitive Bush Knife. And this thing is amazing. It's awesome if you're doing a lot of primitive skills and you want just a one purpose knife that can carve and chop, build shelters and all kinds of stuff. And, and if I was doing more survival, this is the knife I'd bring. It's still very lightweight it, uh, and it slides on your waist and you, you can actually run with this. But the thing is, you know, running through national parks and different places on the trail, I don't want to freak people out with a big Rambo knife on there. So I ended up r focusing primarily on two knives. I brought uh, with me the Canyon Carver, which is another another one I designed with Condor. And there's two different sheaths that I have with this one. Both of them are uh, very good for running. They stay flat on the flat on the waist, and uh, they stay put, which is really nice. And this is a good little knife, it's super lightweight, and uh, does a lot of tasks that I I needed to do while I was out there without building any big shelters. Um, sometimes I'd also switch it up and bring uh, this pocket knife by Topps. Um, I'm actually not sure which model this is. It says the M-SPY 3.5, so that's what it looks like there. Um, and this is a great knife. It's got aluminum handle, super lightweight. Um, I was able to do a lot of carving bushcrafty task with this that I needed as well. So that's the basic on the knife, it's just keeping it light. Now with footwear, I, I actually I learned a lot about footwear again coming onto a different surface. You know, out here, like I mentioned before, I run on a lot of a lot of sand, a lot of clay. It's totally different. And you know, one of my favorite footwears out here is just the old Hirachi design sandal. And uh, this one has no cushion in it. There's a tire sole sandal there, and uh, it's just bare bones. It's very much like running barefoot. And um, this is what I started off with. And um, in hindsight, I feel like in order to adjust to the trail's hardness coming from the soft soil here going to a hard pack trail over there, I probably should have beefed up my sandal. And, and Luna actually makes a couple different ones like this. This is called the Mono and it has quite a bit more cushion built into it. And if I worn this, who knows, I might not have got injured right off the bat. But um, so that was a good lesson just you know, adjusting to your surfaces. If you're a minimalist style trainer where you like to run in minimalist shoes, just, you know, figure out, you know, don't don't go bare bones when you're going high mileage to a hard surface. You know, make those adjustments as necessary. Um, and when I got injured, I tested out a few different shoe designs. You know, I went to the store and kind of felt stuff out from, from zero drop to six millimeter to 12 millimeter drop and um, and what I found was the four millimeter drop, which is still almost nothing, um, in this this particular shoe. This is the Saucony Nomad Trail. Um, worked really well. I ended up just making it into a sandal shoe, which I really like. Uh, you know, it's it's just nice to have that breathability. And uh, this shoe still has a lot of flexibility, which for me is really important. I found that stiffer shoes um, actually made my knee feel worse and also having a higher heel made my knee feel worse too. This was a really good opportunity to you know feel what my body really needed at that point. And uh, people have asked me like when you take take these shoes and you cut out the tongue does the you know do the laces rub on the top of your feet and and the answer is you know I feel like as long as you have a fairly flexible shoe it's it's not too bad and if and I feel like when I'm doing super high mileage, I do notice, you know, a little bit of rub spots here and there, but I just kind of switch around the laces a little bit. So if you do end up cutting the toe box out, just know that you kind of have to move things around here and there. That's the way you get around it. Um, another shoe which I really liked is called the Minimus 10 V4. And, and I found this near the end of running the trail and I wish I discovered this shoe sooner because it, it really does feel a lot more like what I'm used to and 
in terms of running in my sandals. It, it feels a lot like a moccasin that just has a little bit of cushion. And this one surprisingly um, aggravated my knee the least amount of a lot of the things that I tried out. And this, this shoe is super flexible. And again, it has just a four millimeter drop. That means there's, there's just a very slight slope to the, the forefoot. And it's just enough to give it a lot of flexibility, but still have a tiny bit of cushion in the heel. So this shoe's pretty cool. Um, definitely um, gonna train more in this at home, as well as just get back into running in Hirachis. So that's, those are some of the things I learned about, you know, footwear while having an injury. Um, you know, in my head, I was thinking, well, maybe I'll just get something a little bit more supportive, give my knee a rest, but it really didn't work that way. I still found having a minimal style shoe, even through the injury, because I was used to that. My feet are strong. It, uh, it allowed, it actually allowed my feet to do more work instead of my knee. So, so that's, that's the skinny on, you know, some of the gear that I preferred. Um, there's other systems I tried out. I tried out a different pack. I tried out some hammocks which were awesome to sleep in but some of the other systems they they just they were a little bit heavier and I feel like this this gear here I really liked. Um, you know if I were to narrow things down what you see in front of me is, is the basic kit and I think it'll be a good start if, if you guys are interested in doing more ultralight fast pack running. I think there's some good options here to consider from the tarp, the bivy sack, these two backpacks. Um, and don't forget the cloth. I mean, that cloth will do some awesome justice as well. So, um, yeah, that's it. I just want to give you a little update on some gear.